Just a short video for those who like um, transport, uh, not just train spotting but other forms of transport. So in other words, a transport enthusiast like me instead of a train spotter. Yes, and, uh, but I still like so the The first uh, thing that you see when you walk into SXSW at the Technology oh, really? and Innovation Hub is this Peng, X Peng. Flying car or drone car or whatever you want to call it. Looks very futuristic, and someone actually said um, it, the seats in there are not actually very comfortable. So imagine being up in the air for a say an hour if it lasts that long that is um, you wouldn't have a very comfortable flight as such so you can see it's not like sitting in the car it's a little bit more um, streamlined a little bit more tight in um, the seating and also very angled it looks like more angled than if you were sitting in a car seat or any type of motor vehicle seat, even um, a plane seat, I suppose. So, yeah, very interesting. It looks um, like a looks like a drone to me, just an oversized drone. Um, but it also reminds me of a hybrid between a helicopter and, I suppose, a car or. Um, it doesn't remind me of a seaplane or a helicopter because it doesn't have the features of both of those, but definitely reminds me of a drone, an oversized drone. Um, I wonder how safe these are. And it would be interesting to find out what happens if there is an emergency whether um, like there are life jackets or there are airbags or anything um, ejector seats even so yeah so very interesting Okay, so the flight time is only 35 minutes per 75 kilometers. So it's actually not that fast. The top speed or well, speed is 130 kilometers per hour. And it's um, electric. Oh, it's actually moving. Well, not off the ground, but the propellers are actually moving. if you would call them propellers, that is. side is actually on green and the other side, side the lights are on red. Um, I wonder if they actually have um, blinkers or indicators as such as well. I'm assuming they would have. And the upward um, opening doors they would have to have. I don't think it'd be very practical to have sliding doors or opening doors, sideway opening doors, that is. It's going to 
sleep in the bonnet as well. Whoa. I don't want to get hit by the propeller. Charging port. Ah. Bonnet. Like a, Can like we a, see? Inside? Yeah, jump in. Yeah. Is that just a standard charging port? Yeah, yeah. it's a CCS2, mm -hmm. it's a Type 2. Okay. But just overseas, I think, but Type 2. Thank you. Are these two Australian standards? Uh, we're waiting for aviation to approve. Okay. So once they approve, then we can say yes or no. Mm -hmm. So how does that, how would that work? So say if I just, obviously because with the airspace being shared, we already have issues with drones flying around unrestricted, like very restricted. How would that work? That's on top of point to point to address to address. Up, then, this, you can't pre fly. I mean, but it's, it's still it's still using airspace though. Like, do you need to get like well, approval? That's what we're waiting for. Aviation has approved anything yet. Yeah. So once like aviation gives us the rules, regulations, restrictions, then we sort of say yes. These are conditions. This is what you That's what I'm saying. Like, because because um, even with drones, like even if you don't go everywhere, like there's still airspace restriction. Right. Yeah. So, and drone is tiny. This Depends one is. Depends. It is big drone. <laughs> these a much are, bigger drone. Much bigger. <laughs> These are aimed at like agricultural farms, country areas, um, emergency services, okay. as such, not for city at all because it's not enough airspace and mm. wires and obstacles. Um, oh, it's it's great for traffic though. Oh, it's great for traffic. <laughs> it, it's designed to reduce traffic, mm. um, but ABS Trade hasn't been approved yet, so until they give us their the report, we can't really comment on what we can and do. How much are they selling? Well, what's the value? Well, the value is 210000 in Australia. Right. Fly away. And um, that's what they're saying. So they're, they're trying to tell yeah. approximately. And how um, weatherproof are they? They're airtight. They're waterproof. Mm -hmm. They're weatherproof. They've got sensors all the way around. It's got a built-in dash that's got um. Sorry. All good. Yeah, it's got um. It's got a built-in nav. So similar to a flight radar, <laughs> mm -hmm. it picks up other sort of aircraft. So would that okay? Of actually, like flying, like with the radar and everything, you kind of expect this person to drive, drive, fly. Oh, you don't, you don't. It's just passengers, and it's controlled by point to point to aggregate. Right. There's so no it's actual human interaction at all. So completely autonomous. Correct. And it's all um, electrical. Yes. All. Uh, yeah. EV. Yeah. Have you actually been in one? Not, uh, not, like no, not, not this one. My colleagues have, but not me. Okay. Are they really heavy batteries in there? Like, um, how well, are the they maximum quite? weight is 560 kilos. Right. So I think I have to get this. Um, That's all right. So Thank you. Okay. Hey, sorry, boy. I wonder if you'd need to have, you probably wouldn't need to have a driver's license because there is no control as such, it's autonomous. So it'd be like getting into an autonomous bus or shuttle and um, it would drive it for you, it would drop you off at wherever you need to go. So great idea for me. Um, but I don't know if I would be feeling safe enough to actually um, sit in one and lift off. So, yeah. Sure. That's the first piece. Just like this. Exactly. Together. Piece by piece, I'll build one at home. Wherever I can afford it, I'll come and buy another proper. <laughs>
What kind of a license would you need for this? We don't know. You're only for aviation to approve us. Yeah, so as we well. Know. Yeah. We so there's not nothing really. Nothing. This is just a prototype. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It'd be great. We wouldn't need a license if they don't require a license because I don't drive. We don't know. So. Yeah. It's all being reviewed at the moment. Right. How far would it be from? Like obviously select point you said from A to B, yeah. but how far can the A and B be? Um, either 35 minutes away or 75 minutes away. Okay. Uh, that's the range. What are the safety features in there? Do they have airbags? They have um, uh, ejector seats or, <laughs> <laughs> or a parachute? Yeah, <laughs> something like yeah, it's life jackets. A, it's got a built-in ballistics parachute. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. So in case it just kind of dropped from the sky? It won't just drop, it'll float back to safety. I mean, with the, with the ballistic... Um, parachute. Yeah, with the parachute. That's what I'm saying, like, that's where the whole parachute is, so you don't kind of just drop. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just like have like, you know, glider wings that comes out. Oh, not this, not this version. Sorry. Very interesting. I would. I don't know if, if I'd take a ride in it at the moment. I know. <laughs> it's but just. It's, um, it's a good concept. I mean, it's something that they have been trying to. You know, they said they will have flying cars in the yes, 2000s. Yeah. It's now. Yeah. 2024, and we still don't have flying cars. <laughs> Imagine all the Uber drivers that will lose their jobs because they could do lots of Uber driving. <laughs> or, or you can have Uber drivers just buy one of them and you just go from point A to B and just pick up people. Yeah. So then you don't actually have to drive. Well, actually, Uber wanted to get rid of all their Ubers. They mm. wanted to get all the autonomous vehicles. Yeah. But the autonomous vehicles haven't appeared. They disappeared. I actually went on a ride on that autonomous Did bus. Did you? In Sydney. Really? Yeah, How was that? Park. A bit scary? Very slow. Very heavy. <laughs> the battery took up at the third yeah. of, of the bus. It just... And I guess like safety wise as well, you can't go too fast either. No, right? it was pretty safe. I felt safe in it. Um, okay. And there was, um, over. I think they have override buttons or, or they have someone sitting there no, yeah. all the case, time. Yeah. yeah, they did a mock route and okay. they had bus stops as well. So just open the door, get in, close the door. <laughs> it was very interesting, but they, I haven't heard anything since. Yeah, so they probably dropped the project. Yeah, I think there's there's probably a lot more work to do mm. with autonomous driving. I think that's interesting because I think with with people, it's I feel like it's either going to be it's either it has to be all of them to be autonomous to kind of make it safe and viable. Yeah, or like you know, in very specific scenarios to have them or mm. places because mm. I just feel like having a mix of autonomous and you know drivers is just like a recipe for disaster yeah <laughs> yeah but I like the design of it <laughs> I know that's kind of cool very cool very space age but apparently someone got in and sat in the seats and said oh this is so uncomfortable because <laughs> it's really tilted yeah. and it's not that padded it's a it, it looks worse than sitting on an aircraft See? Well, it's like, it, it actually looks like a jump seat seat. For yeah, yeah, yeah. But it just, yeah, it doesn't look very. I mean, it has to be safe, right? If you're going to be up in the air that mm. high, so. Mm. Oh yeah. Well, nice meeting you. Yeah. Okay, it's time to exit and go to Tumblong Park. So, thanks for watching.